So a while back, I reviewed a portable 15.6 inch monitor by a company called KYY. It's $129. I'll drop a link to my full review in the description down below. And I really actually liked it. It was one of those products that rarely come along where a company asked me if I want to review it. And I was like, eh, I don't know. But then when I got the thing after I started using it, I absolutely fell in love with it. And I'm using it in ways that I did not necessarily expect. It is living right over here next to me, plugged into my Steam Deck, which is now running Windows 11. And it's basically turned my Steam Deck into a Nintendo Switch competitor running, you know, full desktop operating system. And it's been really, really nice to have. However, there's one big problem, one glaring omission from that device. And that is that it is not a touch screen. Shortly after posting that, another company reached out and said, hey, we also have a 15.6 inch portable monitor, but ours does in fact have a touch screen. Now, it is a bit more expensive, 189 versus 129, right? $60 more expensive, but they've sent it over. I've got it here in a box. I'm pretty sure that's what is sitting in that box over there. We're going to take it open. We're going to take a look at it and see if I can determine if that touch screen is worth 60 additional dollars. Let's jump into that unboxing right now. All right, why max it? Multi-touch portable monitor. Now I have a suspicion here, given that this is the exact same size panel and they're both IPS. I'm guessing this is probably a different shell, but probably the same panel as what was in the other portable monitor, but then with a touchscreen digitizer laid on top of it. Unfortunately, I already unboxed this one, so we're going to have to do it a second time. Something about my recording failed, so some of this is already out of its internal packaging. Just bear with me. You'll get to see the unboxing either way. So that is the device itself there in sort of a folio case that's built into it. We have a a USB charging adapter, something to power the device. And as it says here, not an adapter, it is an adapter. If we take this up out of the way, what we have underneath is a cleaning cloth, instructions, uh, USB C to C, A to C, and then HDMI to HDMI mini. As for the device itself, let's go around it very quickly. Uh, OTG, so this is USB uh, B micro, and I believe this is basically like a hub. You could plug in like accessories, although I don't know what accessories you have that are gonna be a USB micro, but whatever. USB C times two, there's your mini HDMI, there's a speaker up there. On the flip side, we have a uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a volume rocker, and then a power button, and then of course, another speaker on top. There is nothing on the bottom. There is equally nothing. Now, this thing is pretty interesting. So it looks like this folio case is magnetic and it goes on both sides. One cool thing is that this has a vase mount on the back. That is really, really cool to have. You could mount this thing, but it's magnetic on the back. And then what you're able to do is flop this down and then set it forward and you actually have two different angles that it can sit at. Pretty cool, really big logo down here at the bottom. Why max it, which I don't think necessarily looks great, but it is what it is. Okay, so this thing can also be powered off of only a simple battery bank. That is good to know. And what better to choose but my Steam Deck running Windows 11. Let's adjust the camera angle and see what we have here. So first off, is the touchscreen working? Yes, it absolutely is. And it seems to be working pretty well straight out of the box. Let's get, oh, just clicked on a video. Uh, shout out to Tyler here on Locked on Titans. Good, uh, good video, good channel. Uh, the screen is quite smooth. Um, so that is a good thing, okay? So it's not like a, sometimes these touch screens right out of the box, they'll have kind of almost like a tacky thing going on. That is not happening. As you can see that we got black bars because we're rendering at the wrong resolution. So let's go into our display settings and let's do extend these displays, which should allow this to start running at its native resolution, which is 1920 by 1080. And that is what is happening now. Let's jump over here to Google Photos. We can do a couple of things here. One, we can kind of get a look at what the color looks like, the brightness, all these things. But also, I should be able to test if it can pinch to zoom. And that is definitely the case. We do have pinch to zoom working. So multi-touch looking good. If you push in the volume rocker over here, you can actually get into a series of settings. 
where you can control brightness, contrast, eco. So you can change through some different presets, although I'm gonna guess standard is probably gonna be just fine. This thing actually does have free sync as well. So that is that's actually kind of surprising. The power button does go back and then volume mute off image flipping in case you want to mount this thing vertically, which you could do with that base amount. And then you can switch your inputs. Let's look at a couple of photos here and see what I think in terms of just the, the quality of the screen. Honestly, I think that the colors look pretty solid here. Really nothing much to complain about. The touch screen seems nice and responsive as well. This is this is pretty good, guys. I do need to get a listen to the speakers. And for whatever reason, when I use my Steam Deck like this, I can't seem to figure out how to make the sound come out of anything but the Steam Deck. There seems to be no other option. I'm sure I'm just missing something simple, but we're going to use a Samsung device with DeX to do that next part. And something else that we can test here before we move forward, let's unplug the power supply and see if this thing is capable of running DeX just off of the phone. So the phone is now powering the display and should be running DeX. That is awesome. So this thing is a, a, a standalone device with your DeX device. Awesome. And because we have a touchscreen, all the better for it. That makes this thing really, really useful, guys. This is basically a 15-inch tablet now running simply off of the phone that is probably already in your pocket. Let's crank that brightness up a little bit because it was strangely low here running through decks. And now what we need to do is let's grab YouTube music and let's see if we can test these speakers out. Typically, this is a weak point for these sorts of things, but we're going to find out. We need to make sure that the output device is the display device, not the phone, because these speakers are good. Definitely not super loud. Um, I believe I am maxed out in volume across the board. I maxed out on the hardware and on the software. Not super loud, but they're not really distorting. Let's compare this to the speakers on the phone, which are going to blow it out of the water. Yeah, definitely not incredible speakers, but they are there and they are functional. I do want to point out that compared to the KYY monitor, which is here and it is inside of its little folding stand case thing, this thing does feel a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier. So this is about 200 grams heavier than the one by KYY, but it is also because of the nature of the case that it is in, it is also much easier to sort of shed that case and have it as just a monitor if that's the way that you want to go whereas that one it's in that sleeve it's going to be pulled out fold up that sleeve into a stand and then set back up this is extremely simple because that's all you have to do and you're done now of course i talked about how the touch screen is definitely like the number one selling feature of this thing right well there's a couple of big caveats with that touch screen okay so it's only going to be active if you're plugged into a device via USB-C to C, okay? So if you're plugged in A to C, that's actually only gonna charge the device. HDMI just gives you a picture. C to C is the only way for the touch screen to work. So the way I wanted to use this thing was with my Steam Deck in conjunction with my Steam Deck. But the problem is I use a Steam Deck dock. That way when I plug the thing in and dock it, I get my mouse and keyboard, I get my Xbox controller with the dongle, all that stuff working. Well, that dock does not have a USB-C port that can be used for display out. So the touch screen is off the table in that setup. I'd have to have another setup that allows me to have a C cable going out as well with all those peripherals in order for the touch screen to work. And because of that, I think that in my mind, the number one use case for this thing to utilize that touchscreen the best is going to be Samsung DeX because there's a lot you could do with something like this. This thing is not prohibitively large. You could potentially put this thing into a large backpack or something like that with this 
cover on it. And at any point, pull out your phone, plug it in with a you know short USB-C cable, and now you have a 15.6 inch touchscreen to work with Samsung DeX. You could just as easily bring with you something like you saw in the intro bit, one of these folding keyboards, maybe even a mouse, but you probably don't even need the mouse really because it's a touchscreen. So you're cutting down on one peripheral. I talked about this as a use case for this monitor. Well, because of the touchscreen, you can leave one peripheral behind. All you need is the phone, the monitor, and maybe something like this teeny tiny little folding keyboard, and you've got a full workstation right there. And it's actually going to be quicker to set up because, again, no mouse to set up, and the standing mechanism is just simpler and quicker. Now, even though the touch screen is not working for obvious reasons as a Nintendo Switch, and that's just not a thing, Nintendo Switch does look really nice and crisp on this 1080p panel. Now, of course, it's going to need to be supplying power to the Nintendo Switch. So you can see there that I have power going into the screen and then plugging into the switch from there. So it's delivering power to the switch, which allows it to go into its docked mode, take your Joy-Cons off, and everything is just fine. That's the wrong Joy-Con to move around with. There we go. Everything is working really well and really nicely. And just because I know you guys definitely want to see it, Surface Duo 2 and a Duo Dock USB-C cable into the side there, another USB-C cable to supply power, and what do you have there? But the display being duplicated, and to make matters even cooler, the touch screen is, of course, also working. So you've got yourself a pretty nice multitasking experience on this device as well, should you want to do that. It's also worth noting that any device with a USB-C is probably going to be capable of using this monitor as well. In this instance, you're seeing my Surface Go 3, which of course does have a touch screen. So it makes a lot of sense if you're going to have an external monitor, a second monitor for a device like this. You're going to want that second device to also feature a touch screen so that you can use that second monitor exactly as you would the first. This is also going to work Maybe you've got a desktop like I do that has a USB-C port there coming out of the back of your device on your motherboard. Well, same thing here. You should be able to plug this thing in and use that as an extra monitor, touchscreen fully functioning. So overall, I like the portability of it, right? I like the fact that it's got this folio case that allows it to sit at two different angles, even if the base of it, the platform it sits on, is a bit bigger than the KYY version that was a little bit slimmer and kind of easier to fit on the desk. It still is pretty slim, pretty small, smaller than the base of a typical monitor for sure. So nice and easy to move on the desk and off the desk, kind of move the thing around and put it up wherever you need it to be. I do think that the screen looks pretty good. It's not particularly bright, but it's definitely bright enough here underneath my bright lights to be more than usable. The touch screen does feel pretty decent, although it only works on USB-C to C, like I mentioned, so that's something you've got to keep in mind. But I have to say, if you're someone that really needs that external portable monitor to have a touch screen, is it worth spending an additional 60 some odd dollars? And in fact, this has a coupon right now making it even cheaper than that. What does this have? This has a $19 coupon. Okay, so it's going to get a little bit cheaper than the $189. We're setting it $170. Now, is it worth that extra money to get that touch screen if you have the right hardware, the right setup to take advantage of it? I think that's definitely possible. I'm going to have to figure out a way to get an extra USB-C port over here on my Steam Deck because I really, really want to have that touch screen. In fact, I can take my external mouse and probably just put it away and use the touch screen for most of my inputs. And that's kind of what I want to do. It takes up less space on the desk. And I'm so used to a touch screen with my KYY model, I kept trying to use it as a touch screen. My brain is so programmed to expect that that for me, an additional $60, it's probably going to be worth it, but you have to make that call for yourself. I will drop links to all of this, affiliate links to Amazon in the description down below so you can check that stuff out. Big shout out to YMAXIT for sending this screen over for me to review. Guys, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.